My name is Kafaya Tadiyoye. I'm from EcoConnect Research and Education Initiative. Um, I have here with me Tomi Awushika, one of our intern from the University of Lagos. I studied electronics engineering and I have interest in Python, Raspberry Pi, and um, robotics. Um, I've, I'm using these tools to, to train secondary school students basic programming for our project with Ford Foundation. And I also work with her in terms of um, Python projects. I'm sure most of us here, of course, we are familiar with Python. That's why we are all here. Um, my presentation is going to focus on its application in physical computing and how it combines computer science with electronics. Robots and um, Raspberry Pi, I'm still going to um, describe more about these devices later on. They are examples of physical computing devices. So you may be wondering what is physical computing. Physical computing involves um, the interaction of physical system with computers using programming. Okay, um, and also by converting analog signals such as uh, motion, temperature, into digital signal and from digital signal back into analog using electronic um, components such as sensors and actuator. These sensors are um, devices that convert the analog signal that I just gave you an example, which is motion or temperature into digital signal and the actuator are to convert um, from digital back into analog. It works in both two ways anyway. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give you real life examples of um, physical system. Um, examples are, are fans that comes on and off depending on the room temperature, and also fire alarm system. EcoConnect collaborates with researchers, and one of the projects that um, they are working on right now is um, to build a system for food security in Africa. And um, it is where sensors can measure soil nutrients or the um, humidity and temperature that is suitable for crops. Um, for my presentation, I'm going to be showing you a very simple demo to turn on and off a component called light emitting diode. And I will also show you a moving robot and um, a motion sensor that sends uh, motion pass it on into the Raspberry Pi that has microcontroller to process this data and then triggers a camera to take picture of that moving object. And this process uh, describes a surveillance system. In my next two slides, I'm going to be describing the devices and components that were used to that make up this demo. So Tommy will be showing you the are you ready to okay yeah as i as i'm mentioning the devices and the um, components she will be showing us so one of the devices is the raspberry pi raspberry pi is a single board computer and its operating system is a linux based distribution called raspbian and if, from the slide you can see a label diagram for the raspberry pi and um, it has HDMI output to connect your screen or your TV, your monitor. It has Wi-Fi, it has USB port to connect other peripherals, LAN, and, uh, and so on. Um, but one main part of this device uh, for physical computing is the general purpose input and output pin called GPIO. And um, it is the interface between the Raspberry Pi and external component connected to it. Beside the diagram is the, um, a label diagram for the GPIO pins and what they represent. 
connected to it is a resistor and an LED. Both um, components are also electronics components. So they are connected to one of the pins there. And with this, okay. They are connected to one of the GPIO pins, which can be used to control them with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, here yeah, I have um, Pi camera. Pi camera are used for taking pictures or recording videos. And um, it, um, it is connected on the camera port on the Raspberry Pi. Then um, there's the PIR sensor, that's a passive infrared sensor. It's mostly used as a motion detector. And um, it measures the infrared radiation or energy emitted from objects or human beings. Beside it is the Finch robot. This Finch robot was designed as an educational tool to inspire the study of computer science. And um, as you can see from the diagram, um, the, it contains different sensors, and these sensors can be programmed for the robot to perform different tasks. It, it also has the LED that I mentioned earlier, but if you can see from here, the robot is emitting that. So you can actually program the LED into different colors, and not just the red, green, blue, and so on. Okay, here, the first picture at the left side, it shows the setup of the Raspberry Pi. A resistor a, and um, an LED are arranged on a breadboard. That's the white board there. And they are connected to the Raspberry Pi GPIO with the wire connectors. Uh, beside it is a Python script to turn on and off the LED. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I'm sure most of us here might understand what um, importing libraries, creating objects, um, defining functions, and um, yeah, and defining variable means. So I'm just going to run through the script. The first line of code there is um, importing the GPIO Python library, followed by the time library. Why the next three lines is um, showing us the GPIO pin connect, um, connection, that is the pin that that LED was connected to um, on the Raspberry Pi. Why the rest of the script is just showing us the on and off function of um, the LED. We, actually here we use the while loop to control the component. So Tommy, will run the script for the LED to show us the lighting LEDs. And Tommy, she is um, remotely connected to the Raspberry Pi through a system using the VNC viewer. As you can see, in between the breadboard, I know I've mentioned that earlier, and the Raspberry Pi is the GPIO connector. So can you move, can you move to this side? Um, the LEDs uh, were programmed to come off for two seconds and then turns off. So, so that would be independent of power supply. That was why we are using a power bank to power the Raspberry Pi. Thank you, Tommy. Okay, now I've just shown you a very simple example of um, what the whole concept of physical computing is. So now let's move to a more complex demo. On this slide, I have a Python script for a surveillance system. From the script, uh, th that's the script at the left side. Um, the first two lines is important the GPIO library. The next is important the Pi camera library and then the time library. Then um, the following next two lines is showing the GPIO pin connection for um, the PIR sensor, that's the motion sensor, sensor. and then a button. Uh, with that button, we are, using the, we are using the button to actually stop the script. Then the um, other parts are showing the GPIO pin numbers, I mean the setup, to set up the GPIO pins for the, con for the components connected. Why the rest of the script is 
just showing us the functions, defining the functions for all the components. Beside it is um, a Python script for the Finch robot. Um, the first line is importing the Finch robot Python library, and it contains uh, every it contains functions of every part, every sensor, accelerometer for the movement, the temperature sensor, the obstacle sensor. It contains all that functions so that you can be able to program them. So that you can be able to program them. Yeah. Okay. Here we also defined object for the robot, but in this for this purpose we are making use of the wheel function to move the robot forward and backward. So now we are going to just do a demo for the surveillance system. But in this case, the Finch robot is acting as the intruder that the surveillance system is going to capture. So Tommy, please. OK, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to pass on the HDMI to Tommy so that she can connect to the Raspberry Pi. And you can actually see the camera. So as the robot is moving, the um, PIR sensor is sensing the tell me you can run it again. It's sensing the motion, and then um, the camera is taking picture of it. Can you run it again? Run it, run it again. Yeah. So the picture's taken. The pictures taken are stored in a folder. We actually created a folder where we want the pictures to be stored. So we we'll just quickly show you. So now she has stopped the script with the button that I mentioned. And um, on the screen, there's a place, um, I mean, on the screen on the Raspbian OS, we have um, motion detected, pictures, picture taken. This shows that, yes. Our surveillance system is working fine. Camera is in there. So, so you can you can see the robot has been captured. So sorry, the picture wasn't that clear. But anyway, that's about it. Yeah, you're back to my presentation. There are other cases where the surveillance system can be implemented. And the examples are listed here. So I'll start with the burglar detection, uh, where if an unknown person invades your home, you can, for instance, program the system to send pictures to your email or as a tweet, and you can quickly call for help. Traffic monitoring. Let's take, for instance, here in Lagos. You know, one of the major problems is traffic. So we can have sensors that can um, dictate where there is more traffic to trigger the traffic light to allocate more time to that area. But I'm sure with this, it will reduce um, traffic congestion. Wildlife monitoring for tracking um, wildlife and um, endangered species in remote areas for their conservation. Then campus access control. I'm sure in most of our campuses, when vehicles, cars are entering into the campus, the, the security guards will um, give them tags to monitor their outgoing and incoming. Rather than doing that, the system can take pictures of the plate number, store on a database, and um, the guard can, with this um, database, they can actually monitor the incoming and outgoing vehicles. So using a virtual assistant, Google Home and um, Echo Dot. I have uh, the example. Of course, I had several um, examples of um, virtual assistant, but I just listed two that Google Home and the Echo Dot. They are smart devices. And um, you know, when, when I asked me to um, run the script, the Python script for the surveillance system and the lighting LED, she was doing that remotely with her computer. Actually, with this smart device, I can still control this same demo with the smart device. So Tommy, she's going to introduce us to one of these smart dev devices, the Echo Dot, and she will be controlling the lighting LED with Echo Dot. Okay, hello everyone. So 
We have here an echo dot made by Amazon. And most of you know Amazon Char. You shop online and stuff. So Amazon um, Echo Dot is a virtual home assistant. It, you can ask it questions. You can tell it to send you emails to your friends. You can tell it to play music and so on and so forth. But now I'm just going to ask her to introduce herself. But the reason why I'm saying her because it's actually a female voice that you hear. And to trigger this, you have to use the word Alexa. Alexa kind of wakes her up. So Alexa, who are you? I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions, play music, tell jokes, and more. To learn more, just ask, what can you do? Another question. Alexa, what is the yeah, what is the weather like in Nigeria? Alexa, what is the weather like in Nigeria? Which location was that? Alexa. <laughs> What is the weather like in Lagos, Nigeria? Right now in Lagos, Nigeria, it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit with partly sunny skies. Today's forecast has some sun and thunderstorms with a high of 84 degrees and a low of... So I don't know if my time is up. Okay, you can see that we can ask her questions. But what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to tell her to put on one of the LEDs here. Alexa, turn on... GPIO 21. I don't do want to do questions. Yeah. Alexa, turn on GPIO 23. Alexa, turn on GPIO 23. Let me just turn them off like this. Alexa. Turn off GPIO 21. So, Python code for my demo, you can find it here at this URL in GitLab. Um, this are uh, activities that EchoConnect does. Um, we are research and education initiative. Um, we are involved in all sorts of activities, so this is the summary of our activities. And one that is dear to us is the Girls in ICT day that we do to encourage um, young girls to pursue career in ICT. And um, we also have our, our campus technology internship program to um, train students on problem-based um, learning and to encourage innovative, um, inno innovative uh, work in, in um, STEM. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Um,